One of the bad things about fall is having all these trees extremely close to your house. Although beautiful, at the same time, they are a pain in the butt too. Especially when you are recovering from cancer treatment. But I wanted to show you something because a lot of people ask me about this. And I'm going to have to excuse here and get up where I can get where I can talk about what I come to talk about. This is a 24 foot ladder. Now, my house is, for all intents and purposes, three stories tall. And you have a porch. And that 24 foot ladder barely reaches the roof. You can see it's sticking out one, one step above the roof line. And that's with it on the porch. So really to get to it from the ground level, you probably need a 40 foot ladder or better. Um, because the back of the house is even higher up than the front of the house. But at the front of the house, from the edge of the roof to the patio, I'm guessing a 40 foot roof would do it. So the first year that I lived here, you can't see it, but I'll show you when I get up here. All them leaves you saw on the patio are also in all of these gutters. Well, you can kind of see it right there. You can actually see the leaves sticking up along the top of the gutters. They're plumb full. I just cleaned it out a couple of months ago because I forgot to clean it out last year and I ran out of water. Anyways, the solution I come up with, I had this 24-foot ladder. I actually take two 2x4s two and I screw them into the porch. That keeps the ladder from kicking out. <laughs> then I use a nylon strap that you would tie stuff down in the bed of like your truck or something to attach the ladder to that railing over there that keeps the ladder from kicking out also and keeps it up against the roof because it's at a pretty steep angle then I climb up there I clean the gutters out I wait until the rest of the leaves are off the trees. I clean the gutters out. And I have to do that because, you know, my water is from rainwater. My cistern gets filled up by rainwater that empties into the gutters. So, anyways, I just wanted to show you how I do this. A lot of people ask. I'll go ahead and go up this ladder. I can do it holding this phone. I was going to, like, try to set up two cameras and do it that way. But that was going to be a pain in the butt. But I think I can hold this ladder and get up there too. It's a long ways up. And the closer you get to the top, the shakier the ladder gets. I'll probably have to skip this part. See what I'm talking about? Clear full. You can see the roof the same way. But you get up here, it's not too bad once you're up here. I should have brought the broom up with me and got the rest of these leaves because they're just going to wash down into the gutters. But now that I'm up here, I basically get over to the edge of the roof. I might be able to just scrape these down with my hands. heard something I didn't know what it was sound like an animal on the other side of the roof but I'll try to get as many of these off the roof as I can ooh that's kind of slick I just heard something again So obviously with these leaves being so slick, I'm being as careful as I can be, but I got to get this done. And this is probably something 
you would want to think about if you were buying a rural home like this house is built so unique I've not really ever seen any other houses like it yeah it's beautiful to be out here in a country like this but there's a whole lot of extra work that goes along with it too and that's kind of what I'm getting at just stuff that like you know people in the cities they got eight or nine or ten foot to the roof and they can go get a 12 foot ladder and get up there and clean the gutters out and not even have to get off the gutters my roof is considerably different I definitely wish I would have brought that broom up here I actually had it set out and then just got more interested in recording the video and left it down there But this is basically just, I have to do this every year. multiple times a year matter of fact so I usually have to do this a couple times in the fall like when the bulk of the leaves fo have fallen like now you can see that oak tree got some leaves left on it but not near as many as it did like that oak tree kind of the same way that tree over there most of it's fallen off but um so I wait until most of the leaves fall off and I do this and then, usually about the time that either we get a really hard frost or we get like a week of really, really cold, snowy weather, then I'll come out. And basically, I just stick my hand into the gutter, pull. <laughs> Now again, rainwater gets into these gutters and empties into the cistern, and that's where my drinking water comes from. Now I've got filters on the water system, but this is another reason why you have to keep this cleaned out, because if these get clogged up, then it restricts the flow of water, and then instead of the gutters collecting the water, the water just spills out everywhere. And then next thing you know, you're running out of water, which is exactly what happened to me in early October. I run out of water because I didn't do this last year. And I've actually got a couple of places of this gutter that needs to be fixed. Like right here, you can see that the water can actually get between the roof like I gotta gotta nail this up seems like there's a nail right there but it's pulled loose or something so I got some other work I need to do too with these I don't remember doing this last fall. I'll have to ask my mom and stepdad or my sister if I did. They were here when I was going through the cancer treatment. That would have been about this time because October last year, or actually, I'll, the year before last. Man, it's been two years already since my cancer treatment. Seems like it was just yesterday. And I'm still dealing with all that stuff too, so. You kind of have to be careful when you're this close to the edge of a roof, because that's a long ways down. You can see my Jeep over there. You are a long ways down.
you can see that there's some water starting to collect here and that's because this downspout up here must be clogged up so i'm already not getting water we had some rains last week and i can pretty much already tell that we are not getting water down the downspout Yep, it's clogged up. I'm probably going to have to go get a piece of metal or something. Sometimes I can just stick my fingers in there and get it to unclog. I don't think that's going to be the case today. Yep, so I'm going to have to get that cleaned out. Probably see down in there where it's clogged up. But that's most of the leaves out. Again, I'll have to do this again. So I'll just hopefully remember the next time that I need to do this. I mean, the important part was, the part I wanted to mention was, people have asked, you know, the, how I keep the gutters cleaned out when they see, like, how high up off the ground the roof is. So I wanted to explain that. And then, you know, the things to keep in mind if you're buying a house. Because when I bought this house, I never once looked at the roof and said, man, that roof's really high up off the ground. You know, there's other things about living out in the country that you just don't really think about. Like how hard it is to get someone to deliver something out here. You know, FedEx and UPS used to be okay with delivering out here. Now they say their trucks are too big for the driveway. and They leave our stuff at, literally at the end of the road now instead of delivering to your house. Mailman still comes. But I have a feeling that's probably someday going to go away too. I think the mailman one of these days is going to be like, eh, nope. My mail truck's too big because they deliver just about as much stuff as UPS and FedEx anymore. usually gets a little bit easier on on this side of the roof because there's a pine tree over there and usually that gutter over there gets clogged up with pine cones but there's not really any trees and leaves that can blow over to here but there is a few just not near as many
Now, I know some people are probably going to wonder, like, well, what about the stuff that washes down? Like, the leaves that wash down into the cistern. And, well, I'm going to tell you, the sediment floats to the bottom eventually. And then you put filters in. Of course, your, your pipe, you can kind of see there now what I'm talking about. There is some leaves, but this is almost always mostly pine needles and pine cones But anyway, so any leaves or pine cones that wash into your system, your pickup pipe is off the ground, maybe a foot or so. And basically what happens is, you have to take and clean your cistern out. I don't know if you should do it every year. I'll be honest with you, I've only done it once since I've lived here. But, um... That sediment will build up in the bottom. It'll float to the bottom and there's not a lot of like movement in the water. So it's not like it gets mixed up and it's suspended in the water. It, once it sinks, it sinks. And the pickup tube don't pick it up. So it's not like it's pumping it into your house. But uh, I, I don't know that there's anything wrong with drinking water that's got obviously lead debris in it. I mean, granted, I got cancer, but that wasn't from drinking water. That was a totally explainable reason, not related to the water. If you've not seen that story you can go back and watch those videos Getting into the pine cones. I do try to keep this. So, what this is, believe it or not, this is mostly. The little like gravel that comes off of your shingles that wears off over time and it collects in there and then gets like leaves that break down on top of it and it kind of turns into like a thick muddish looking thing of course we just had rain not too long ago so it's wet it's actually easier to clean these out as far as like that sludge right after it's rained. Because otherwise it's just like trying to pick up salt. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's that fine.
And I forgot. So there's this house also has like lower roofs on the back of the house and the front of the house both, and you got to get those. But I always start at the top because these larger roofs are the ones that collect the most water for the cistern. So I always start at the top. See the view from up here? There's part of the lake over there. More trees. I also had, uh, I need to get this roof done. So in 2019, I had some shingles that got blown off in a storm and I basically patched the roof there. But look, there's another one. There's another one I'm getting ready to patch. There's another patch down there I did. So I was gonna do the roof this year or last year I was going to do the roof, but, you know, trying to get through this cancer recovery has just been pretty difficult. And uh, I was going to do it this year in kind of the same deal where, you know, just trying to get through the cancer recovery has been difficult. But anyway, so I bought another roll. This is a uh, three foot wide, usually comes in like a 36 or 50 foot roll, three foot wide, 36 or 50 foot long roll of shingle material. And of course, you go ahead and you raise it up. So that way it's tucked up under the shingle. Lay it down. I seal the edges of it with some asphalt. And uh, that's what I'll end up going to these two places. I actually went into town the uh, day before yesterday and bought another roll of it. And then, um, hopefully, that'll get me through next year or this winter and then in the spring hopefully i can knock this roof out because it's literally like in 2019 it was like am i to do like i needed to do this but then i got cancer in early 2020 i actually bought like so i used to do roofing when i was younger um i used to do roofing for a company that did like government housing projects so we'd travel all over eastern United States and do government housing roofing and I did that for like two summers I think and then my girlfriend I had at the time complained I was gone all the time and I was making buku money though like like I was making uh, anywhere from, I think it was in uh, in New York, we were making like s prevailing wage for a roofer, whatever that was in like the early 90s. It was, it was a huge amount of money. I remember like in North Carolina, it was like, I don't know. $30 an hour and in New York it was like 70 and in Kentucky it was only like 10 or 15 or something like that But anyway, so I could do this I could do this roof the old-fashioned way hammer and nails But this is a tear-off and I'll tell you why The first fall that I bought this house. I didn't notice it and I don't think the inspector did either. There is no drip edge on the edge of this roof. So underneath this shingle is just this gutter. There's no drip edge. There's supposed to be a drip edge. And there's also, there's tar paper. But there's no ice and water shield. So there's only one, one row of shingles on this roof. Which tells me that you know, somebody had done this roof in the last 20 years at least, but they did it like the cheapest way possible. And the shingles are basically worn out. You know, it don't have the drip edge. So my goal was I was just gonna 
buy all the stuff and and do do the roof myself so that way i made sure it was done right of course then i got cancer and even though i had the money to do the roof myself i I got some estimates for other people to do the roof, and I thought, man, that is just crazy. Because I know what it takes to do the roof. I know how long it would take to do the roof. I mean, I could probably do this roof myself, tear off and reshingle it myself in one weekend. You know, now there's things that, things that you don't think about, for instance, I called Rumpke to ask him about getting a uh, one of those metal trash bins so I could just throw the throw the shingles into it and nearly had a heart attack when they quoted me a price like a ridiculous price. I think it was five hundred dollars for one week to bring one of them steel storage bins out here and leave it. But you know I'm gonna have to do it, so that's all there is to it. Oh, there's another patch up there I did. So again, the roof, there's a uh, ridge vent right here that's been custom made. You can see, again, they didn't really do a very good job. What they did is they tried to combine the two ridge vents. And uh, this is a ridge vent that's on a roof that shouldn't even have a... I don't even think it's supposed to have a ridge vent like that. Um, anyways... The wind blew this off, so again, I just patched it. My patch job probably worked better than that ridge vent does. Again, stuck under the ridge vent, just nailed down. But, you know, there's other stuff I got to do up here. Anyways, I'm rambling. I just want people to see this. I ain't going to hold the camera going down. You guys know how it's done. Plus, it's quicker for me to have both hands. But that is now all of the gutters on the upper roof. I still have to get the lower roof. There's one of the ones in the front. You already seen the one in the back. Anyways, 30 minutes into this, I'll try to figure out a way to chop this down. As always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.